Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar on how to get started with EV plus PV. Uh, my name is Franny Flinterman. I'm project manager at Solar Plaza uh, and in charge of our electric vehicle summit. Uh, we will organize this event on the 8th of December in Arnhem. For those of you who don't know Solar, Solar Plaza, let me quickly introduce us to you. Uh, we are a global events organizer. Uh, with a mission to positively impact the su sustainable energy transition. Uh, we are based in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Um, we have hosted numerous events uh, over, the, over the globe and we have a network of over 60,000 PV professionals uh, who are joining us at our events. Uh, this webinar today is part of uh, or part of the run-up to our electric vehicle summit on the 8th of December in Arnhem um, for a closer look at our program of the event and our amazing speakers please have a look at our event website uh, before we get started I have a few notes to share with you uh, first of all please feel free to ask your questions to our speakers you can use the questions box uh, that you can see in your screen uh, you can also use this box for any technical issues that you might en encounter. Our staff is here to support you with that. And of course, you will receive the recordings and the presentations of this webinar in uh, the coming few days. Our moderator of today is Jos Thomas. He is e-mobility expert and founder of Green Mobility Partner. Uh, welcome, Jos. Uh, we are glad to have you here as our moderator. Um, now, let's get started. And the floor is yours, Jos. Thanks. Thanks, Frenny. Hello, hello. Thanks for the introduction, uh, Frenny. I'm really looking forward to this uh, webinar today. I mean, the trend is finally together with EV, charging and solar. So uh, after eight years working in this business, I'm, I feel really, uh, yeah, Really excited that we can talk about the yeah about the combination because that's that's where I see the yeah the golden egg. Um, we have today three presentations, so if we can move to the next slide, we can discuss the agenda. The first one is from Nienke Ommen from Natuur and Milieu, and she will give all the insights how we can shift today towards. Uh, zero emission transportation or mobility. Then we have Hielke from the RVO um, to talk about um, everything, subsidies and uh, economics and uh, yeah, wh where the, um, the <laughs> sorry, where the um, yeah, where the government can help us with. So really interesting. And then last but not least, we have Colin Industries with Robert Kohle and Jente de Vries to give an example and all insights of the current projects that we are doing today. At the end, there's Q&A. So uh, then we will go over all the questions. So as Franny said, please fill in your questions so we can uh, we can get them answered. So move over, we move over to Nienke. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Nienke Onnen and today I will present you a step-by-step -step guide for uh, the transition to zero emission transport. Um, I'm working at Natura Milieu. Natura Milieu is an uh, independent environmental organization that is working towards a climate neutral uh, society in 2050 and restoration of biodiversity. Um, we do this by focusing our projects on four major themes. The first is ener the energy transition, uh, the second food, third is circular economy, and fourth is mobility. And today I will talk about the tra transition towards zero emission transport. Uh, this is really important because mobility causes around 20% of all CO2 emissions, and this is uh, really a lot. Uh, furthermore, uh, a lot of European cities do currently not comply with new uh, World Health Organization guidelines for air pollution. And this uh, results in health issues and lower life expectancies. 
And as a result of this, more and more European countries and cities are implementing policies for zero emission transport. So you want to get started with zero emission transport. Um, then the first phase is the orientation phase. In this phase, you are going to set your ambition. You are going to determine why you want to make a change. This can be for environmental reasons, maybe financial or a competitive advantage. And secondly, it's also important to determine whether your company has to comply with new or future regulation or rules. In the Netherlands, this can be, for example, uh, the introduction of zero emission zones for city logistics in, 40, in 30 to 40 cities from 2025 onwards. This means that only uh, in these zones, only uh, trucks or commercial vans are allowed that do not uh, emit any CO2 or any uh, other air pollutants. Uh, and this applies to all uh, commercial vehicles. So whether you own a bakery or whether you are a mechanic. Uh, another new regulation is the normative regulation on work-related passenger mobility, which applies to employees with over 100 employers, uh, employees. Uh, and this is a, um, a reporting uh, obligation for uh, all work-related mobility. So homework-related uh, mobility and business mobility. And last but not least, there is a new policy aim to ensure that from 2025 onwards, all business cars, so passengers' cars, have to be electric. So in the next phase, uh, you are going to determine uh, your the impact. So in, you are going to make an impact analysis. And uh, you start this phase by analyzing your current fleet. fleet. So the size and the characteristics, for example, the age of your vehicle. Then you are going to determine the impact of the new regulation and rules for your company, because this uh, influences the speed and the actions you are uh, going to have to take. For example, if we focus on the zero emission zones, you want, would like to know where these zones are located. How often do you enter these zones? Or is your business maybe located in such a zone? Uh, next step is to determine uh, your options and the costs for zero emission transport. Um, currently, there are a number of different uh, types of vehicles available and the market is changing rapidly. Uh, almost every week, um, there, there are new uh, cars or other vehicles announced by uh, producers. Um, purchasing such a vehicle, an electric vehicle, can be costly. However, uh, operational costs are generally lower. Uh, if you want to uh, calculate your total cost of ownership, you can use handy calculation tools uh, that are available on the website mentioned in the sheets. It is also um, important um, that you consider other types of vehicles. You can uh, replace your current vehicles for an, uh, an uh, electric vehicle, but maybe a light electric vehicle is also an option. For example, a cargo bike can be really handy if you do parcel delivery, deliveries, uh, but also for maintenance services. Uh, in addition, all cities that are going to do, introduce zero emission zones, uh, herbs uh, are created around the city centers. For uh, and these can be transport services you can use. Um, then uh, it's also important that you get yourself familiar with all kinds of support options that are available. Um, most uh, local governments, in the Netherlands at least, offer uh, advice services that help you uh, make the transition towards zero emission transport. And such services are generally free. Um, in the Netherlands, such an advisor is often called a logistic, logistic makler. Uh, then there are also uh, different types of financial support and subsidies. And in a few minutes, Hilke will tell you a little bit more about this. 
then we go to the next phase, the planning phase. Uh, in this phase, you start planning your actions and investments. Actions can be, for example, seeking advice, trying out new vehicles, um, and making choices for investments. Um, you want to establish a, a certain growth path for your electric vehicle fleet uh, and plan additional investments you need to make in uh, charging solutions as well as a grid connection. Take delivery times into account for both your vehicles and charging infrastructure. Uh, if you uh, want to make your transport truly sustainable, then you should also consider investing in solar panels. Uh, buying solar panels is also a good first step if you're currently not yet ready to replace or uh, buy a new vehicle. And with solar panels, you can make your energy supply fully uh, climate neutral. Um, to match uh, the supply and demand, uh, you can consider smart charging as an option. And during the event on December the 8th, I will go a little bit deeper into the benefits of uh, and the opportunities of combining EV and PV. Um, then you should also de uh, determine your start charging st strategy. Uh, you do this by analyzing your company's journeys, for example, with logistic advisor. Uh, determine uh, you, sh you, sh you start then to determine the battery size you need uh, and the charging solutions uh, that are optimal for your company. The right profile of your current uh, vehicle determines the best charging solution for your business. And this depends on the number of kilometers you drive, uh, the destination and the home base of your vehicles. Um, you can consider fast chargers if your electric vehicles are heavily used uh, or if your business process is highly dependent on the operation of these vehicles. In the fourth phase, the execution phase, um, you're going to get started. Um, you should be aware that switching to EV takes time. So, and it's really important to make sure that both internal and external par parties are uh, involved in the process and you engage them for support. Uh, for example, internal parties, um, um, in, well, internally, it's important that, that not only the board or maybe the facility department or the fleet manager is involved, uh, but also, for example, human resources is connected in, in the process. Uh, if we focus on external parties, um, then, um, for example, if you are renting a, uh, your building, you should talk to the building owner or other tenants. Uh, they might be able to co-invest in, in charging so solutions or the solar panels or you might uh, want to include new wishes in your rental contract. Uh, it might also be necessary to upgrade your uh, connection to the electricity grid to enable required charging solutions. Um, in this context, it's really important to contact your uh, grid operator or your network administrator, and you should inform them as soon as you have drawn up your plan. Uh, inform them about the growth path for your electric vehicle fleet and your expected future electricity demand. So with those four steps, you should be ready to start your um, to start on the road towards zero emission transport. Uh, and I wish you a pleasant journey for, with that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nienke very nice to see the steps so we can switch today towards uh, zero emission uh, transportation i have one question you talked about the grid connection that is important to inform my uh, grid operator but yeah it's in the news nowadays right uh, it's very heavy if i switch over to electric vehicles but how should i know if i have enough capacity or what capacity i need for the type of, of 
yeah, charging infrastructure that I need. Can you also give some advice about that topic? A really good question, Jos. Thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, well, actually, the uh, grid operators have collectively, collectively developed a, a tool where you can calculate the electricity uh, needs for your electric vehicle fleet. And you can then also calculate uh, whether your current uh, grid connection uh, offers enough room for this or that uh, uh, an upgrade is necessary. And I will provide you with the, the link to that tool uh, in the chat function. Thanks, that's very useful. Um, that's it, more questions at the end. So uh, thanks a lot, Nienke. So we move over to Hielke to talk about subsidies and uh, economic and fiscal support. Hielke, kick it off. Yes, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, okay. Yes, um, yeah, hi there. I'm Hugo Schure. I'm, I work at uh, FVO or the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Uh, this agency helps companies to invest in, develop, and expand their organization in the Netherlands or abroad. And an important part of this is having subsidies and programs to give financial support. So for this seminar, I was asked to provide an overview for this. Uh, yeah economic and fiscal support available for companies to start with uh, electric vehicles and solar panels today um, so what i'm going to talk about is i give you talk shortly about uh, the support the current support for zero emission vehicles charging infrastructure uh, solar panels and some other options for public funding um before we jump into that maybe you're wondering uh, do we really need it um if we look at the incentives for vehicles right now if i look at this year we've seen that for the zero emission trucks we had the requested of 35 million within one day for subsidy and uh, the budget was empty within one day and also the uh, subsidy for uh, zero emission fans uh, has been empty now, it's 22 million. In other words, the demand is very high and companies are willing to uh, invest, but uh, they need support for that. So this is what, where we come in. And um, if we talk about vehicles, there are basically two options, a purchase subsidy and some fiscal support. Uh, for the purchase subsidy, you have two main subsidies. There's the ANZ subsidy for the trucks, zero emission trucks, and the SEBA, which is for commercial vehicles, vans. So uh, let's dive in a little bit for the trucks. Um, like I said, zero emission trucks, it's aimed at, this could be battery electric vehicles, could also be hydrogen, and it's a subsidy for the, for the purchase or the lease of uh, a new truck and the maximum permissible weight must be 4250 uh, kilo kilogram uh, the um, the maximum percentage of subsidy it varies a little bit it's uh, based on the type of uh, vehicle that you're ordering and also the size of your business um, smaller businesses get more subsidy than uh, the large companies so um, if you want to know about that, you can find it on the website. Uh, it's always a first come first serve subsidy and it will open next year in April. And like I just said, it's uh, highly popular. And uh, the last time it opened, it was uh, the, 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 the big pot of money was empty within one day. So you have to prepare your uh, week request. And uh, also for uh, the commercial vehicles, there's a subsidy available, the SEBA, like I mentioned, and this is also to purchase uh, or lease of a new vehicle. Um, and it has to be a vehicle to transport goods. So not, uh, uh, it, it can be like a normal uh, passenger uh, vehicle. And uh, also here, the, the percentage of subsidy, it varies a little bit. Um, I think you can say it's roughly 10% uh, of the price of the vehicle within the, the listing price, but it, it varies a little bit. So uh, it's in any way, it's up to maximum 5,000 uh, per vehicle as per subsidy. 
and this will open also next year um, because also for this year the, the there is no budget left anymore so this is also a very popular uh, subsidy this is the, the purchase subsidy um, this is a little bit a niche maybe not so relevant for you but if you're active in the field of construction there is also this one uh, that is really based focused at the purchase or retrofit for construction equipment so like i said maybe not so relevant but it's also um, a popular one and it can give you maximum of 50 percent subsidy for a, the, the additional costs for a construction machine compared to a com one with a combustion engine um these are the subsidies so the, for purchase there's also some fiscal support uh the mia it's uh there for years and it gives you an investment reduction up to 45 percent of the investment costs that gives you roughly 11 percent uh tax reduction and this is focused now on zero emission commercial vehicles so the vans and some smaller vehicles light electric vehicles um not not no passenger cars anymore electric ones because they are too um mainstream so to say they don't need support anymore and also the zero emission trucks are are um you can use the mia there and also for passenger cars but then if it's a hydrogen vehicle or a solar electric vehicle as uh, the light year for example um and interesting here is that it can be combined with the the previous mentioned seba and anz uh, subsidy so to give you an idea um example um if you are a large company and you want to buy a trailer truck uh, a pretty expensive one in this case 350 euro 350 euro um you will always have the the the, the price of a diesel truck that you have to pay uh, but on top of that there's a, a big gap there's a big additional cost compared to the diesel truck so a part of that will be filled in by the ANZ subsidy and that is the the subsidy scheme as you see 70,000 and then you have the MIA which gives you a tax deduction and that is in this case uh, 31,000 around and then you have the additional costs that is still uh, for the enterprise to to pay so to give you just an idea of how much you can get and this is for a large company if you're a small company a large company can get up to 20 percent for this type of truck so 20 percent that it can it's more for smaller companies so smaller companies get more subsidy and then we continue to charging infrastructure. For charging infrastructure, there is not, uh, not that wide range of uh, instruments anymore. Um, you have the MIA also here, uh, not only the vehicles, also for the infrastructure, it's uh, for the tax reduction, um, but you can only use it for infrastructure that is meant to charge your own vehicles. So uh, that's always, well, it can be tricky. Um, and yes, it, it gives you this, this fiscal benefit. Um, we had the, the SVM subsidy, which uh, gives uh, the, the MKB companies, the SME uh, subsidy on the, 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 the consultancy cost. So if you want to have advice on what kind of infrastructure you have to install, you can have subsidy for that but the one is closed currently and it's not clear uh when it will we reopen or if it ever will reopen actually but maybe that's going to be reopened so we only have this one um there there is uh uh discussions about whether we should also have uh an, an, a subsidy or any other forms of stimulation but uh that's still work in progress unfortunately i can't tell you anything about that yet let's hope in the near future we have uh, some more to put on the sheet here um if we move to the solar panels 
Uh, it's not really my field of expertise, I must say, but we have the AYA, which is kind of the, the MIA, but then for the for, 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 for this one, one of this, the solar panels so, uh, also gives you this, this, this average tax reduction of 11%. And this is really for uh, smaller projects, uh, can be by, by any, uh, any company who wants to do this, can do this, it's open all year. It's not really a subsidy, it just gives you this reduction. Uh, then we have two really subsidies, the ESDA and the SDA++. The ESDA is for small scale solar panel projects and um, the SDA++ is more for the really larger scale. I think it's around, it, it starts at like, I think minimum of uh, 50 solar panels, I think then it can then happen. But um, with the SDA++, it also is based on a tender procedure. So it's not really clear how much subsidy you will receive. Um, you have to fill it in in the, in the tender. And the ESDA is more smaller scale solar panel projects. And um, maybe I'm going too fast, but um, if we, yeah, that's, those are, in a nutshell, I would say the, the main important um, subsidies, which are uh, from a national perspective, if we look at uh, the provinces or the municipalities, we also see that they sometimes have their own subsidies or their own investment programs. Um, so it's always worth uh, to, to look out for that. Uh, I know in uh, the, the province of South Holland, there is a subsidy for solar panels. And also in uh, another province, we see that they're now experimenting with um, with, the, with the, the storage of the solar energy. And if you want to use that to charge, you can have a subsidy for that the solution. So battery packs, for example, uh, those kind of subsidies are not there yet on national level, but also it's the little bit work in progress. Uh, and next to those subsidies from provinces or municipalities, you also have like more um, the green funds so that just gives you a cheaper uh, finance from, from the bank, but it's, it's no subsidy and it's also not from uh, the government, it's just from the banks that can give you uh, cheaper funding. And I guess we're at the end then. Um, the questions, we will deal with that later on, but uh, I do want to point out the, the subsidy, subsidy and financieringswijzer. I didn't realize we had one in English as well, but we do. So uh, if you go there, you can always fill in what, what are your needs, what do you want, and then uh, it gives you the answer what, what subsidies there are available. Thanks, Hilke. Very clear. And the good news to me, at least, is there are a lot of subsidies. Maybe not available anymore, but they will come, right? So that's, that's a good news. Um, I had one question, actually, uh, already. Um, what about new technologies like smart charging, off-peak charging, vehicle to grid? You have like multiple new innovations. Is that also somewhere covered or is that a discussion? Question mark. Um, above, it's, it's also discussed. Uh, actually, I should have mentioned the MIA is only for smart charging. Uh, so you need a minimum load balancing. Uh, function in your charging infrastructure. I forgot to tell you that, but that's uh, that's an important one. And also, if you're working on new innovative techniques, we we always have subsidies for that. It's not focused on charging infrastructure, but it's more focused on this innovative uh, projects. And I guess I should also point out this this subsidy and financiering visor, which I just mentioned. You can find all those uh, subsidies which are focused at innovation or uh, startup of uh, new products and so on. So also for, um, yeah, like, like you said, um, vehicle to grid uh, projects and so on, you can find your, uh, your subsidies. Great to hear. All right, to the, to the audience again, Q and A at the end. So uh, feel free to fill in your questions. So uh, let's move on to Robert and uh, Imke. So um, yeah, guys, kick it off, I would say. Thanks, Jos. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Inter de Vries from uh, Colon Industries. Um, as uh, Nienke and Hilke already quite eloquently stated, uh, there's quite a lot of reasons why uh, an entrepreneur should move to uh, electric. And uh, also, uh, you could hear that uh, speed is of the essence. Uh, at Colon Industries, uh, we work uh, at speed. Um, this is because our founder, if we look in the next slide, um, uh, is Case Cola. Uh, um, uh, I get some jokes uh, now and then about uh, our name, eh? Colon Industries. Doesn't sound particularly uh, sustainable. Uh, no, that's, it's, it's just named after Case Colon. He's our uh, chief uh, founder and CEO, and um, uh, customer centricity, entrepreneurship, reliable technology, and speed are at the, at the focus of, of his professional and personal endeavors. Um, he's the founder of uh, Booking.com, early investor in Uber, and a number of actually 15 other unicorn companies that have become uh, uh, over a billion's worth over the years. And uh, he has a keen eye for where things are happening, where business needs to be done, and what direction the world goes. And now uh, he has seen that uh, the, uh, the, the move towards electrification and uh, green uh, energy is a key topic for uh, yeah, the next big thing actually happening. And we see that really, very clearly around us. Eh? So we had a very strange year, um, uh, the past year. We are in this energy crisis now. Um, we've seen the number of electric vehicles in the Netherlands grow actually double in the last year. Um, and, and that goes on and on. And we see that in our business. So let me just briefly explain to you our uh, mission uh, which is uh, which is very centered on the customer, of course, uh, and it's about just making clean energy and mobility available for everyone. And uh, the customer wants it to be attainable, affordable, and available. That's that's the basic principle. So that's our uh, compass. And how do we get there? We invest as uh, coal and industries in clean energy companies as an investor. Uh, when we have companies in our group, we uh, help them to uh, develop themselves, their team, the technology further so that customers are served better. And um, uh, we encourage them to cooperate into uh, yeah, delivering reliable solutions to customers that are not just one piece of the puzzle, but the complete picture. Uh, we call that our one-stop shop. So um, if we look in the next slide, uh, you can see the portfolio of uh, Colon Industries. At this moment, we have 27 companies. The cool thing is that we have everything in-house from generation of clean energy storage in a number of forms. Um, uh, mobility as a theme that, that, that goes from charging, smart charging, load balancing, vehicle to grid, whatever um, you can think of, and but also parking. Uh, up to the hard Hyperloop uh, uh, initiative, uh, which is very exciting for uh, uh, in about a decade or so. Uh, we believe in knowing what you do and knowing your technology. So we have uh, our own in-house in the Netherlands, mainly uh, engineering and production facility. It's in uh, Oldenzaal, Nieuwe And uh, we're very active in software, which is uh, key for disclosing the opportunities that we have uh, um, uh, in, in the in a switch to clean mobility and clean energy. So uh, with these uh, different companies, we can offer complete solutions for customers that are looking for, that have a combined question, like uh, I have a limited grid connection, I, uh, I would like to have solar installed, and uh, I need to charge a number of vehicles in an efficient way. With combining a number of our companies, we can uh, we can offer those uh, solutions. And the the key thing about that is uh, that the customer has just one stop shop. So you don't buy different components from different suppliers that don't work together. Uh, there's just one uh, one one shop that you go to and it gets fixed. Great to hear. This is the future, <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to see those vans in my city driving around. It's, it's, it's actually the, uh, not uh, the future, Jos. Mm -hmm. it's, it's already here. Yeah, yeah we. Uh, You're right. In, You're you know, right. in Utrecht, uh, we we've developed uh, with We Drive Solar and and some other group companies the the bidirectional city for already a couple of years. It's 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 there now. Yeah, it's it's working. 
Exactly, and that's actually the second question. So how can we scale these kind of projects uh, to, yeah, with EV and PV to, to make it fast and scalable? Yeah. See it everywhere. Well, on the, yeah, on the fast side, is don't hesitate to order your uh, charging points fast. The lead times can be long and you will need them anyway, because what you can see with companies like Volvo, they are uh, will be swamping the markets with electrical heavy trucks, for example, and, and other uh, uh, truck companies will be as well, but there will be no charging infrastructure. So you can wait and debate and do business studies, uh, let's say, uh, for all the time. My advice is to start you know, buying these things, make a sensible choice, we can help you with that. And in parallel, build your, let's say, uh, energy management system in a modular way. So start small and try to see whether you can use solar. Many of the companies we meet, they have you know, ample opportunities to install solar roof. And once you have solar and you have, a, let's say, a backup power grid connection, of course, and you have your charging points, you're off to go. And, and that's the start. Yeah, and what's particularly interesting to mention, it's actually a reason why I personally moved over to coal and industries. You know, uh, in my previous job at Friesland Campina, I was doing uh, lots of megawatts of solar um, on roofs, right, of, uh, of farm roofs. And um, we were always working with business cases in which we had solar uh, uh, earning itself back at uh, SDE levels, right? So uh, seven to 10 cents per kilowatt hours. Ooh, that's, that's what you need to gain. While with EV charging, you increase the value of your kilowatt hour like tenfold. So you need to charge only 10% of your generated solar power into electric vehicles to have the same business case as, as this huge solar roof that is connected to the grid. So you, you have a whole different perspective on grid connection, uh, on, 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 on levels of earnings with the EVs coming up so fast. And uh, so you tackle two problems at once and you can really accelerate on that. And, the, and the, the customers that we work with now have seen that and they are accelerating right now. And everybody who is later, we see that also with the solar panels for consumers, right? If you try to order a solar roof for your house, uh, at this moment in time, you you you're lucky if you if they come by uh, next next year June or so to install the stuff because the stuff isn't there. So uh, okay. yeah, the time is now. Yeah, great a great example and thanks for the for the insights. Um, another question: What type of vehicle to grid charger are you using, AC or DC? And uh, is it Chatmo or DC if it's DC charging? Is it chatable? Is... Shadow. We, uh, we are using both uh, AC and DC charges at different um, uh, kilowatt uh, levels. And the AC charges are typical vehicle to grid ready. All right. DC will be next year. Vehicle to grid. DC, vehicle yeah. to grid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and what's also um, nice to know for, for fleet, fleet management purposes, eh? so uh, there's lots of. Uh, if you install a whole bunch of DC charges, you will inevitably discover that your grid connection isn't going to be heavy enough. Even if you call your grid operator, they'll say, OK, see you in 2035. So uh, you need some clever software to manage the loading, uh, the charging uh, process of your fleet in such a way that you will have your trucks uh, charged sufficiently for their for their rides while staying below the threshold of your grid connection and uh, we have some group companies especially amp control who are specialized in that so they have a very huge business going on actually they're from the us yeah all right thanks so let's move on to the q a then we definitely come back to you guys um let's start with minke minke you told us a little bit about um total cost of ownership Return on investments. Can you, I know it's a super general question, but can you give an example or an estimation or an average what type of uh, yeah return on investments we're we're talking about? Oh, that that really depends on what type of vehicle you buy and if you use solar energy, uh, such as the the last speakers uh, explained. Um, if you if you charge your your vehicles with your own energy, of course, your, your business case will be uh, positive much sooner than, than if you uh, take it from the grid. So th there's not really a general answer to that. 
Okay, great. But anyway, feedback is invest in everything. <laughs> That's better for the yeah for the for the return on investment. Thanks. Then we have a, a two questions for Hilke. Uh, and please, if you have more questions, let me let me know. Um, Hilke, what about home battery storage and plans to subsidize these batteries? Yeah, I'm sure that there are there are plans, but uh, it's still plans. Uh, yeah, no, there, there's no um, uh, yeah, there's no subsidy yet for that. Um, I, I know there's discussion about it, but it's already pretty long, so I'm not sure what the incentives there are, why there is not yet a subsidy. But it's short answer: there's it's not there yet. Work in progress. Okay. Other question to Hilke. Um, what about timelines for next year what is your expectation is it again empty within a day if we're talking about the, the small vents or or what what are your yeah, what is your feeling well the the the, the vents the small vents that uh, it wasn't that uh crazy as with the trucks uh yeah if we talk about the trucks uh if i'm honest if uh, we kind of miscalculated the demand there we, uh, of course, we did some research when we uh, were busy preparing the subsidy, but then it opens and suddenly, I think uh, it, it underlines the whole story of uh, of the coal industries. You could, it, you can, or you, you can start, you know, so companies are ready to jump in. And uh, yeah, we've clearly seen that. So I think, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think we'll see the same thing next year and that it will run out pretty quickly. Said to work to audience, <laughs> be quick for next year. Yeah, prepare okay. your uh, application. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, last question to uh, to Hilke. Uh, to, 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 sorry, let me. Yeah, what about H, uh, HPEs? Can you detail how it works? Yeah, of course. Sorry, Robert the... talked about it as well. The HPEs, HBAs. In Dutch. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, yeah. No, I have to be honest on that. It's uh, I'm not really, but I see someone pointing his finger in the air, so he probably knows no. a whole lot more about it than me. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. HBEs, uh, the Hernieuwbare Brandstofeenheden. Yeah, that's that's kind of a uh, certificate that you get if you uh, if you charge. Uh, sustainable fuel into a vehicle, right? So you have HBEs for sustainable gas, you have HBEs for biodiesel, for ethanol, all that stuff that you can put in your tank to have a, to have a vehicle driving in a sustainable way. Now, these are also available for electric trucks. And the cool thing is that um, if you have, a, if you have a, a power supply from the grid, the uh, average level of uh, sustainable energy in the grid is about 30%, right? So between 28 and 33. So um, you get 33% of the HBEs allocated if you have managed your back office in the right way and you are able to, to, to show that what you're doing, right? So that's why you need this software that uh, Robert spoke about. Um, it gets even better if you are able, like you, like Nienke said, if you are able to generate your own energy through your solar panels, for example, and you can claim 100% of sustainable energy going into your vehicle through your energy system. That's what we actually do at our own site here in Hengelo at our headquarters. Um, and then you can get 100% of the uh, of the energy. Uh, recognized as uh, HBE worthy. So, and then you get the certificate, and it works. It works a bit like uh, GVOs, uh, garanties van oorsprong, that you can also have for sustainable energy fed back into the grid. The only difference is you feed it into your vehicle, and uh, these certificates are traded in in a market. And uh, currently, like Robert said, it's about uh, if you get 100%, 28 cents per kilowatt hour. So if you get only 30%, uh, you can calculate, you get about uh, seven yeah. or something, eight. You can also delay it through a battery. So you can yeah. use delayed yeah. HBs. It's very attractive yeah. if yeah. you do it in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. You should do it, why not? 
it's uh, yeah. So it's, subsidies uh, is not needed at the moment. No, it's not a. It's not a. It's not a. It's totally not about subsidies. Indeed, it's it's a very commercial thing. That's also how we work at Colon Industries. Uh, yeah, like Robert said, you subsidies is a good thing when you, when something needs to get started, but once it is running, you you have this business case, and uh, that's 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 the phase actually where we are in right now. Yeah. Exactly, and, and I have a follow-up question about the batteries, but I think we have an answer to it together with Inte and Robert. Um, should we wait for subsidies, or should we just <laughs> no. buy them? No, no. Why? No. Why? There is a positive business case. Yeah. If you have solar and and uh, and and batteries, especially to combine solar batteries and electrical vehicles, you're ready to go. If you have the means, you know, I work with ten thousands of farmers uh, at Friesland Campina. And we had 1,000 participating in a solar program, and uh, several thousand said, "Well, we'll wait a bit for the next subsidy round." They have nothing, and the ones who who stepped in three years ago, they have the solar roof, and they made a huge amount of money last year, <laughs> this year with with the the high prices. So they're all driving Lamborghinis and electric vehicles. Yeah. So don't <laughs> wait. Don't wait. Like the tractor, I guess. You'll be you'll be sorry. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh, last question, and then we move over to the to the poll um, because I'm, I want to know more from the audience. Um, to our talk and into just really short answer, and I think you gave it already. But tips and tricks because you have so much experience with those future. I call it future, but it's not with those pro projects. Just one or two key tips and tricks. Towards audience. Yeah, we need modern leaders who um, who see who take, let's say, the moral leadership in combination with business uh, sense, because it is very much uh, very well combined in this case. You can earn money at the same time. Uh, you can uh, bring a positive contribution to the energy transition. The time is now. And what we see is we did, we have several types of clients with the clients who are keep on studying and use tons of advisors and spend lengthy time on discussion about what to do. But you have also have clients like the one I just showed who have the vision and do it. And they prove that they are right because the combination of business and let's say moral energy transition responsibility, it's happening now. And if you wait, the lead times will increase and you're too late. You have your electrical truck and no charging infrastructure. And no grid connection. Okay. No grid connection. So, thanks be, a lot. Thanks. Be a leader, not a follower. Yeah. Exactly, and go for yeah. Go. Thanks. I think that's the main message from Nienke Hilke and uh, and you guys as well. Um, yeah, there is also a question towards the group. So, if we can switch to the poll, then I definitely want to know more. So, question to the audience: What do you need? to take the next step in starting or expanding EV plus PV within your organization. So please fill in. There are four options. Of course, this will be hosted during the, the 8th of December in Arnhem at the exhibition. Uh, it could be more in-depth information on the business, purchasing of more electric vehicle, uh, organization, the charging infrastructure, on our premises or solar panels to charge my electric fleet with green energy. I'm gonna uh, choose one, but I'm not saying which one <laughs> to watch a group. But um, let's give it a, a few seconds, a few minutes, and then uh, we have um, definitely some input where we can work on. Uh, for the exhibition. Ah, there we have it. Okay, the winner is organization, organization, the charging infrastructures on our premises. Okay, Franny, back to you. I think we should definitely work on that then uh, on the exhibition. Hi, yes, I fully agree. Uh, the second option was to gain more in-depth information on the business case, I saw. So that's a really good thing to know because that is exactly where we can help you um, if you join our electric vehicle summit on the 8th of December in Arnhem, then you will get a lot more insights from 
speakers such as uh, the speakers we had today in our webinar feel free to use this 10% uh, discount code if you register on our website we are very happy to have you at our event um, well, as uh, to close this webinar, let me please thank Jos for your moderation of the webinar and of course all our speakers for sharing your insights uh, in this very interesting topic. Thank you so much for doing that. And to all the attendees, thank you as well for joining and we hope to see you in Arnhem on the 8th of December. Bye-bye.